Hey guys, this is John. It's been a little while. This is a climbing the rating ladder video. I'm playing TSQL, rated 2137. They open with E4. Man, I'm tempted to play a Scandinavian, but I'm going to go Sicilian. <laughs> All right, and the C3 Sicilian, a very good practical choice. Yeah, Knight F6 and D5 are the best moves here. I recall one climbing the rating ladder game where I played Knight F6, but you know what? Let's mix it up. Let's play G6. I very rarely played this move, but I think it's a decent option behind those two I mentioned. And the idea is, okay, white gets to establish the center, but we're going to strike back with d5, so I get a scanty move in anyways. Had white taken, I would have played knight f6 and then tried to take back with the knight. But white plays e5. This is pretty normal. I'm going to go knight c6. And I will try to develop in French defense-like fashion, sending a knight to f5, pressuring d4. I can consider bishop g4 here. I must confess, I do not know the theory in this exact position, but bishop g4 and knight h6 are moves I'm considering. Yeah, actually, let's go bishop g4. Always when you're thinking about this move, you have to consider queen b3 going after d5 and b7, but I think because of my pressure on d4, that should be okay for me. Yeah, and... I wonder if I play knight h6, white challenges the bishop, we take. If I jump to, D, to f5, white can attack here. So I might play this kind of solidifying move, e6. Yeah, let's just do this. My bishop is outside the chain now. I'll take. And now I could consider going after this d-pawn. So queen b6 for me comes to mind, along with developing the knight, trying to get it to that, that aforementioned f5 square. Let's play queen b6. I'm trying to play a little quicker in the opening because I know from experience it's so easy to fall behind on the clock. This is a 10-0, no increment game. So let's, let's not try to do that. Let's also take our first sip of decaf coffee here at 6.30 p.m. Okay, so I have my opponent thinking a little bit. I suspect they're going to go 92. To defend the pawn because bishop e3 doesn't quite seem right allowing queen takes b2 when i hit the knight so i'm currently trying to use my time right now thinking what i'm going to do against knight e2 it's probably going to be knight e7 i would maybe consider although it looks kind of unusual bishop h6 as well to try to eliminate their dark square bishop but that somehow looks wrong so i'm just gonna keep it real simple here and play knight e7 Get ready to castle. And likely we're going to gravitate towards the queen side. Now, I could play knight f5, though, and hit this pawn. That would all but force white to play bishop e3, wouldn't it? And then, yeah, I could take... I'm going to hold that in reserve. I'm not 100% sure about that move, so let's just play this right away. And what I meant by playing on the queen side is because the c file is the only open file in the position, don't be surprised if the play gravitate toward, gravitates towards that direction, down the C-file. Yeah, and G4, white gains space. Okay, but hmm, F6 is a move that comes to mind here. Normally, I wouldn't play this way, because I think the F6 break is kind of overrated in these situations, but because white's weakening their king and their bishop is now undefended, I'm very tempted to do this. It all but forces a capture, and I think taking back either way is kind of appealing. If I take with the rook, I hit that bishop. Maybe I can double. Uh, taking with the bishop. There is bishop e3. Yeah, I'm seeing some avenues for counterplay even. Okay, I'm going to play it. I'm going to take with the bishop. Let's pre-move this. So let's imagine e takes f6, bishop takes f6, bishop e3. I wonder if g5 is a decent move at that point. So push the pawn to g5. Try to get my knight on e7 to the g6 square. White has taken away f5, but g6 could be a good route for this knight. So, okay, I mentioned the queen side. Normally, I would have played a rook to c8, but because white has played g4, because they seem to be a little behind the curve in defending the d-pawn, I don't think they've quite anticipated me quickly attacking this pawn in the way that I did, because they paused when they played knight e2. I'm thinking maybe I can sharpen this, this struggle. So I think bishop e3 is more or less forced here to defend the pawn. Okay, there's this move. That is true. 
Seems like that move only helps me, though. So isn't white just going to have to go back here anyways on the next move? I could also consider bishop g7, which would force a trade of bishops because I'm on this. You almost start looking at stuff like bishop takes g7, and then rook takes f3, try to hit this, but there's king g2. I don't know. I think rook f7 is my default move here. Yeah, let's not spend too much time. Once again, I think white's just going to have to bring this back. And in that case, they've given me rook f7 for free. I don't know if that was white's intention or not. So I could try to continue building pressure on the d-pawn. I'm probably not going to swipe the pawn on b2. There's rook b1, queen takes a2, rook takes b7. Maybe I could do that. No, white plays bishop g2. Okay, so why are they just giving me this pawn? Do they see something that I don't? Because I'm really not seeing it. Knight takes d4, bishop e3 then. I take on e2 with check. Queen takes e2, queen takes b2. At a minimum, I think I go up a pawn with queens off the board there. I could also take on d4 with the bishop, mind you. So there's that option as well. g5 I mentioned. That would cut off the bishop, but doesn't quite seem so appropriate. So I'm leaning towards knight takes d4 here. And yeah, let's go ahead and play that. Just taking a look at my recording. Sometimes when I launch into these games, I just immediately start talking. I'm always paranoid. I'm going to look over five, ten moves, ten, ten minutes into the recording and see that something was off, like the board was blocked or something. I'm just always paranoid about that. Or there's no audio. <laughs> I think every creator if you've been around youtube for a while you've recorded at least a few videos where you thought the video went great but there was actually no audio the entire time <laughs> okay knight takes d4 so again i did not predict white's move but taking with the bishop looks really good hitting f2 i'm also hitting b2 yeah i think white's kind of going off the rails here could take with the queen as well but i, mean, I think i'm just going to take with the bishop Let's attack both these points. I'd say the only thing white has going for them is that it's a little uncomfortable around my king with their bishop sitting on h6. And they do have the bishop pair. But I can't imagine that's going to compensate them for the central pawn that they just lost. And very possibly another pawn here coming up. So queen d2. Okay, so if I take on b2 with the queen, we get a trade. There is rook b1. I could play it safe at that point and play bishop g7. Force a swap, rook takes b7. Yeah, that's, that's I think, a very safe way to play into a pawn up end, end game. I don't know if I'm in love with that, but it's certainly an option. I could also just play bishop g7 right away. Uh, knight c6 looks pretty good here. e6 is a little tender, so... I'm trying to be cognizant of that as well. All right, so candidate moves our queen takes b2. I'm not going to take with the bishop, by the way, because I get pinned. So queen takes b2, knight c6, bishop g7. Those are all moves I'm thinking of. I mean, they all look pretty reasonable. Leaning towards queen takes b2 and going for that ending. Because I think that ending looks excellent for me. Just wonder if I'm giving white a little too much activity there. Like they could try to break the structure open somehow and get some activity. It feels like it's a technical win for me, but I also feel like I might be able to do better here. And still not risk anything per se. Like knight c6, I still threaten to take on b2. Not only do I improve my knight, but the rook helps defend the b-pawn laterally. So I would, in effect, threaten to take on b2. I, I somehow feel like I'm going to have to play my bishop back to g7 at some point anyways, though. Nah, let's... Hmm. There's also knight c6, rook e1, maybe. Could be a little annoying. But I have knight e5. Yeah, knight e5 looks decent. Okay, let's play knight c6. Queen takes b2 seems like slightly premature. I'm not happy that I spent two minutes on that move. That's far too long. But then again, white 
in my estimation, does not play a critical move in reply. Okay, so rook d1, but this bishop is defended. So I think I can just swipe now. And what is white going to do? Like queen e1 at that point? Hitting the pawn on e6? I just don't buy it. Now let's take. If queen e1, I think at minimum I can play rook e7. Probably wouldn't want to go rook e8 because there is bishop takes d5. There'd be a pin here. Okay, but white swaps. Yeah, now we get the scenario that I wanted, but I'm not even losing the b7 pawn. With the knight in the way before, looking at that first, I would have ran into rook takes b7 after the bishop trade, but here we're just up two pawns. Yeah, I'm, I'm very surprised how white is playing this because this is way too fast and loose. I know this is no increment, and it is an unrated game, but... Uh, white's making this kind of easy for me. That said, I still need to convert, right? Still need to convert this game. So let's play. I think rook e7 is safe. Knight's defending here, so bishop takes d5 doesn't work. Again, had I played rook e8, the bishop takes d5 was working. So let's just safeguard first. Okay, knight d4 is kind of in the air. First, I'm going to bring this over. Kind of expecting white to play this. Yeah, white does. Now, knight d4 makes some sense. Knight d4, bishop takes d5. Ah, uh, that does work now, though. Mm-hmm. Okay. King f6, but then they can block. Okay, I could play king f7. Not exactly what I had in mind, but I think it's okay. Yeah, let's play it. If check, I'll just go here. Maybe snake my king over. It'd be nice to get g5 in to stop this f4 move. Ugh, f3. Is that a mouse slip? <laughs> I don't know about that move. All right, let's play, let's play the g5 move now. <laughs> I don't know why White would play this move. That looks so bad. That looks so very ugly. No offense to my opponent, but... Can't get behind that move. All right, let's play. Let's activate this rook. Kind of tempted to play h6, but I think just reinforcing is good too. Now, looking at this knight d4 move, might be time to do this. It's also knight b4 if I want. I think white's working up to the pawn push. Could play e5 as well. Yeah, lots of good options here. E5 kind of closes the F4 possibility. I'm going to play this one, though. Let's hit this. Let's threaten knight c2. Not sure how big a threat knight c2 is, because there is rook c1 to bail, but I could at minimum trade into an, a winning endgame there. Okay, looks good. Whoa. Yeah, I don't know. I think white just kind of punted this game over the past several moves. This is really pretty baffling, guys. Rook I don't know if I'm getting trolled or what. If they really want this b7 pawn, I'm not even going to let you take it. <laughs> I'm not going to let you take that pawn. Give a check. Take this. This is defended. Let's pre-move just in the case that they take. Mm-hmm. Okay. But I can take. I'm going to go rook f1. Try to win one of the pawns. I can still be greedy if I want. Go here. I mean, why not? Let's just beat the clock at this point and not blunder. f3 coming, perhaps. Or rook, rook a2 first. I kind of like rook a2 first. Let's do that. Let's pin the bishop. I'm not too worried about the check down here. It's fine. Okay. Um, let's go here now. Note again, the knight is guarding, so there's no tactic. Uh, 
But if rook f1, something like knight d3 would be a huge blunder, right? So I want to stay coordinated. If rook b1, I could play something like rook c4. Okay, so there, let's go rook c4. Might move my king off a light square too, just to hedge against bishop takes d5, just to absolutely make sure that move doesn't work. Yeah, could bring the king up now. Let's do it. h4, king here. Why not? Staying vigilant for stalemates, because it looks like I'm going to eliminate white's remaining pawns. Okay, now I, I kind of like checking, because if I can force white onto the second rank, yeah, now we step here. And the bishop is toast. Just avoid last minute Rosen traps. Avoid those last second traps. Okay. Check, check, check. Yeah, let's give a couple checks here. Force the king over. And then just get the knight involved somehow. I think knight here is good. Threaten knight e3. As long as white's left with a pawn that can move, there's no stalemate chance. Yeah, let's go d4. Okay, there is g6, but I can take with the king maybe? Yeah, take with the king. Let's do that. To allow the h-pawn to move, and then when they play h5, I'm gonna go king g5. Just to, again, make absolutely certain there's no stalemates. Like. <laughs> I'll show after the game how that could have potentially ended in a stalemate if I was not paying attention. Yeah, now I think I can go check. And on takes, takes, white has to play king e1, and then we can mate. All right, yeah, I thought white's play was pretty baffling, starting, honestly, kind of, kind of here. They lost the d-pawn. I mean, maybe I could chalk that up to not being so vigilant. But really from, yeah, this point forward, f3, my first thought in, upon seeing that move is I thought it was a mouse slip. Because I can't imagine f3 is a good move here. I thought f4 would be played. Because if f4, White can try to break up this light square cluster that I have and try to get at this d5 pawn in particular, but certainly you don't want to play f3 and blunt your bishop. Then the bishop has to seek play into the game elsewhere. Yeah, and rook takes e6, I, I have no clue. <laughs> no clue, because I'm defending this pawn sufficiently. Okay, uh, so yeah, I want to check a little bit of the theory of this line. Maybe early on here, white should have played g4 in this position before castling. But I think ultimately white's position was all right. I just thought white would play in more standard fashion, like put the bishop on e3 at some point. Maybe b3 if they really don't want to lose this pawn. So we'll check the opening, talk about the theory there a little bit, and we'll check the middle game. I'm kind of curious if f6 was the right call, because I have a lot of different ways I can go here putting a rook on c8, whether it's rook a c8 or rook f c8. Both those moves look really standard. Even this, this move, I know it might look more natural to play rook a c8, but if I really do think the battle might be on the queen side at some point, it's possible keeping a rook on the a file could be handy. So I'll be interested to see what the engine thinks about f6. And yeah, from white's perspective, I'm also curious... The theory, again, in this line, I'm not too familiar with it, but you try to stagger white's pawns like this, potentially sending the knight to f5 via one of these routes, getting the bishop outside the pawn chain if you can, like I did, trying to eliminate the knight. You got this French defense-like pressure on d4. Yes, the bishop is buried, but everything else about black's setup is pretty cohesive and solid. So I think there's some definite... French advance and even Carol Khan advance parallels there. Okay, let's click into the game review. I saw I had a 0, 0, 0, 92.5% accuracy. 
82.4 for my opponent. Turn off the feedback. Okay, so Sicilian. Yeah, and Alapin. I like this line a lot from the white side. For those of you who are below 2,000 especially, I think this is a good line to, to look into against the Sicilian. It's not considered as theoretically challenging as knight f3 followed by d4, which is the open Sicilian. However, the idea is so straightforward and fundamental. It's to play d4 and try to build up this big center. It's not really possible that this is uh, a bad attempt for an advantage. Yes, I think black can equalize, but you could say that, that same thing about a lot of different variations. It's not a developing move, but again, if you can get this nice center with the two pawns side by side, and they get to stay there, especially like they don't get, get staggered, like as in this game, or black doesn't have some immediate way to pressure them, that tends to be advantageous for white. And I've talked about this in many videos, mostly from the white side, but online, mostly what black does here, honestly, is they just play some move that allows that. Knight c6 is super popular. This move is fine against the open Sicilian, knight f3, where when white goes d4, black is very happy to take and then play with two center pawns against one. But in the c3 Sicilian, if black just plays routine moves, white gets to build up that center that I was talking about. And if they nurture this correctly, let's just play some standard looking moves. You don't even have to play that aggressively from the white side, but you get into a lot of scenarios like this, it's already pretty nice for white. The engine's showing that white should even, or black rather, should try to fight back. D5. Uh, also, white could have potentially played D5 themselves earlier. But that's, let me flip this around. That's kind of the blueprint. Is something like this. Maybe we'll even make this more vivid, like throw in H3 to stop knight G4. Yeah, I get the minor pieces all protecting this, this array of pawns. Rook C1, potential D5, E5. White basically just controls an extra rank of territory compared to black, right? The, the fifth rank is the battleground rank. White has the pawns on the fourth rank. Black is a little passive with those pawns on the sixth rank. That is something that you can use from the white side and really build upon for your advantage. So in a nutshell, that's the philosophy of this C3 move. Play D4, but when black takes, we're taken back with the C pawn. And in that way, kind of negating Black's first move, the Sicilian, which intends to control the d4 square from the flank and try to trade a flank pawn for a center pawn. White's trying to push back against that. And if we throw the opening book on and click the Explorer, yeah, so you'll see... Oh, they've kind of changed this up recently. Yeah, you'll see after c3... According to chess.com, the moves to play in this position, yeah, knight f6 and d5, those are consider considered the two most challenging moves against white's concept. You can kind of understand why, because both disrupt this d4 move. So d5 threatens the pawn on e4. This is actually a Scandinavian, but with the moves c5 and c3 thrown in, which should benefit black, as much as it pains me to say that. <laughs> Compared to our normal Scandinavian, white can't play knight c3. And black is already influencing this d4 square pretty nicely. There's a bunch of theory here. So that's a very reliable line for black. Knight f6. I play this move sometimes too. Again, if you check my last climbing the rating ladder game in which I played the black side of this line, which I think was against a cheater actually, someone who ended up getting banned. Uh, I played knight f6, threatened their pawn, and often white goes forward and then plays d4. This is another one of these scenarios where, yes, white does achieve these two pawns in the center, but they're staggered, and they're therefore easier to attack. And black can start chipping away. Black's doing okay here too. So I do think those are the best options. They're not strictly the only moves. I mean, you can see e6. Yeah, there's some theory here as well. The idea is to offer a transposition into a French defense. White could go into e5, and this would be a pure French advance. So there's some theory here too. And there's also the line that I played, which is this g6 move. So g6. Yeah, white doesn't play d4 right away, but had white done that, I would have reacted very similarly. Takes, 
pawn takes, and then d5. Immediately strike at the center. Not let white sit around with these two pawns as flexibly placed as possible on e4 and d4, right? We're going after the center ASAP. And a big thing about this is if white takes on d5, you generally do not play queen takes and get pushed around. This can lead to a little too much time being lost for black. You're playing knight f6 in this case, and you're trying to take back with the knight. There's many, many games that have been played from this position as well. So usually, therefore, white plays e5, as you can see from the stats. But okay, back to the game. So in the game, white plays knight f3, bishop g7, and now d4. Yeah, I trade. We're almost always going to trade in the Sicilian when white plays d4. So we trade. Yep, d5. Once more, if white had taken, I would have played knight f6. So white plays e5, the main move. I feel like I've looked at this position in the past. I just only intuitively know how to play it. I have a very rudimentary understanding of where the pieces should go. So I played what at this point? Knight c6. Yeah, it looks like bishop g4 is actually a little more popular. I wonder if that's because on knight c6, white can throw in h3 if they want. Okay, that is a move. h3 would prevent the bishop from coming here. Looks like they also play bishop b5 a fair amount. And how does this go? Bishop takes. This line looks vaguely familiar to me. Like white actually makes a trade here. Maybe hopes to prove that this pawn is weak somehow later. Takes some of the heat off the white center. But yeah, I'm not an expert on this line whatsoever. Just playing out some moves here that look kind of normal. Take. F6, start undermining. I know this construction looks kind of weird. I, I probably wouldn't recommend this whole setup for black to, you know, someone below like 1400. Because developing your knight to the edge of the board, playing F6, having your bishop staring against this pawn wall, that is a little unusual. So it requires some sophisticated handling. I think for most newer players, play that D5 move on move two. That's the way to go. And you can see other videos where I've shown that move. All right, so I opted for, yeah, knight c6, and then white played knight c3. I got in bishop g4. So it actually appears like knight c3, despite being a pretty natural move, is a bit of a mistake. And I'm using kind of a, an engine shortcut here because it shows the evals. Oh, you guys can't even see that. Sorry. This is a little bit better. Yeah, so it shows bishop b5 and h3 is not only the most popular moves, not by much, but more popular than knight c3, but the engine seems to like those by about a half pawn more than this knight c3 move. And it kind of makes sense, because I think after bishop g4, black has this implied threat of bishop takes f3. You can imagine if white did h3, we take, and if white takes with the queen, then we can nab this pawn on d4, hit the queen, threaten the fork. This isn't looking too hot for white. So h3 would prevent that. And the bishop b5 move also creates like a little bit of a counterweight in pinning the black knight. So this kind of counters the bishop g7 thing. Oh, note that bishop b5 does not run into queen a5, by the way, because white has knight c3 defending the bishop. Okay, so yeah, let's get back to the game. So bishop g4, bishop e2. This has still been played a lot, but look at these stats for black. The statistics are really, really nice. What did I play here? I played e6. Engine doesn't think that's the best. Let me just click out of the opening book. Yeah, this is one of these things, though, like e6. It gets the dubious mark, but according to the local evaluation here, it's completely fine. So maybe I won't, I won't read too much into that. I mean, it's suggesting bishop takes f3 as well, but to my eyes, generally I'd want to hold off on bishop takes f3 because I feel like a lot of the times white's just going to play h3 anyways and compel me to take. So why would I want to do it voluntarily when white hasn't even uh, invested a move in playing h3? 
But yeah, knight h6, I could totally understand that move too. I was just thinking if knight h6, let's say h3, takes on f3, takes. I didn't like that this pawn was under attack. And if e6, like maybe g4 makes more sense here, keeping the knight out of the game. Looks like the engine says this is okay for me though. And it actually suggests a really similar plan to what I did in the game. So f6, trying to attack the center, trying to play down this file. It gives a small edge to black. Interesting. Okay, so yeah, it appears like there's multiple good ways for black to play here. e6, knight h6, maybe bishop takes f3. But e6 looks totally normal. Yeah, and interestingly, it's giving knight g5 as a possible move. That looks kind of odd, moving the knight again, but I can't understand why, because like after takes, knight takes, white might want another defender on the d4 pawn in the form of that knight. So maybe that's an effect saying that, hey, as white, you might want to keep that knight actually and not allow the whole bishop takes f3 thing. So h3. I was very happy to take and play queen b6. This seemed pretty consistent to me. It's also showing knight h6 or knight, knight e7. I don't think I mentioned this in the game, but in addition to queen b6 attacking this pawn and eyeing up b2, I do like that it controls the b5 square as well. So I don't have to worry about white's knight coming into b5. If I played knight e7, I guess it doesn't work right away because I have queen a5 always if I need to. But I should be aware at some point, maybe after white castles, this could be a theme later on. So probably not a huge point, but queen b6 does guard against that. Yeah, knight e2. Okay, it does say bishop e3 is playable here for white. I wonder, takes and hit this knight. A lot of times this is the poison pawn, but because rook b3, rook b1 rather, runs into queen takes c3 right away, I thought this would be good for me. That's showing some compensation for white, but maybe not quite sufficient compensation. So I think what white did is, is normal here. Knight e2, defend the pawn on d4, which I was double attacking, right? Now they get two defenders, but keeping this bishop guarding the b pawn. Okay, knight e7, white castled. And here I was thinking for a moment, you know, should I go knight f5 or should I just castle first? I decided on castles. So I didn't like knight f5 because I thought bishop e3 would come and then I wasn't sure again if I should take something like this. Looks like the engine does say that this is fine. This is a pawn. Which, yeah, given the kind of deplorable state of white's minor pieces, does make sense. This whole cluster of pieces just isn't doing much. The bishop's blocked. Notice I have all these pawns on light squares. This bishop also is pretty blocked off, just playing a defensive role. Same thing with the knight. So I think, I think in a longer game, yeah, I probably would have thought about this a little more. But again, I didn't want to fall too far behind on the clock. So just played the immediate castles. And I totally get why white played g4 here. And it looks like it's not a bad move. So g4. Another, another option, I think, is to play b3. Kind of wonder how this might play out. Knight f5 hitting the pawn. And then play, let's say, bishop b2 to defend. Ah, but now f6. Okay, f6. And I guess in this way, after a trade, I get my bishop in the fight against d4 as well. This is another circumstance where white's going to lose this pawn which I think the engine is showing here. Okay, so yeah, it, it does seem like the trend is in my favor here. It seems so innocuous, but I, I do think that h3 move was a little too accommodating for white. Because again, it encourages me to play a move that I was planning on playing at some point anyways. I didn't want to rush it, because a lot of times white does play h3 in this type of situation, but fundamentally... With my bishop outside the chain and not really having good retreat options that often get it trapped, 
I'm probably going to trade this bishop for the knight anyways. So I think that kind of starts this trend in my favor. The swap and then the, the problems white had in keeping the center together. And when you're attacking a pawn chain, you typically want to try to attack it at the base. The base of the chain, right? I've often equated it to chopping down a tree. How do you chop down a tree? You don't chop it down from the top. You chop it down from the base. So we're going for the trunk. This is a mini chain. So attacking d4 in the way that I did tied white down pretty early in this one. And then when I kind of exhausted ways to easily attack d4, white played g4 and stopped knight f5, which would have added another attacker. Then I focused on opening up lines elsewhere. And actually, I am going towards the top of the tree now with f6. So the engine does approve of this move. It says it's okay. But yeah, I think I could have also played rook c8, one of the rooks over, knight a5 maybe, or knight b4, tried to infiltrate on the queen side. I think that was a decent plan as well. But even here, it looks like it's showing f6. So that is a thing that can happen against these, these pawns. Again, I think in the French defense, that type of thing gets played too often. I've seen players try to force this, this move and weaken especially the e6 square in the process, this pawn here. But it is certainly a theme. So white takes. Yeah, I took with the bishop, hitting the pawn. Taking with the rook is very tempting as well. Hits the bishop on f3, but I just thought white would come back. But this is another option, like double the rooks or something. I wasn't sure if white played something like f4. Ooh, but I have some radical ways to play here. e5, start using the pin. Okay, or even g5. Very interesting. Idea there is to get the rooks traded and then open up knight takes d4. Winning a key pawn and the lines are opening in black's favor. So some fun stuff suddenly starts appearing down the f file and towards the d pawn. But I took with the bishop, and I really thought white would just go bishop e3 at this point. It would have been interesting to see what I would have done against that move. I probably would not have grabbed the pawn. I know I keep mentioning this, but I just, in the game, it didn't seem worth it to me to allow this sort of thing. But this looks okay. It is a pawn, and the a pawn will be dangerous at some point, more than likely. I think I would have played the g5 move, honestly. So what does the computer think about this? To me, this, this move looks pretty aesthetically pleasing from a strategic standpoint. Because my knight on e7, it's a bit of a redundant knight right now because he can't go to the c6 square. The other knight takes that away. That's called a, a superfluous piece, a superfluous knight. Uh, it's a Duretsky term. But when you have two of the same type of piece, usually knights or rooks, it's hard to do with bishops because they're opposite colors, but <laughs> knights or rooks that occupy like the same circuit or are competing for the same squares in your own camp, then often one of them is superfluous. So, or redundant or just has a hard time getting in the game. So I'm kind of feeling that with this knight not having a lot of scope. So that's why g5 appeals to me, trying to send the knight here and maybe into h4 even. But I guess the computer is not that impressed. But to my human eyes, this looks nice. White can't take on g5 here because I trade and then go win this bishop. So I probably would have done that. But nonetheless, I do think white needs to play the bishop here and defend the pawn. I didn't like bishop h6 because although it hits the rook with tempo, like I said, I play rook f7 and white has the same issue. They kind of have to go to e3 and I can't imagine my rook is worse off on f7 then on f8. So, interesting that I could play knight takes d4 here as well, according to the engine. Hits the, hits the bishop. And I don't think I'd normally really consider this. I can see why it thinks that I have more than enough compensation here, but there's no reason for me to take a risk like this when my position's already pretty good, in my estimation. So, Okay, rook f7, I'm threatening to take on d4. Yeah, and white just let me do that. I don't know why, but 
I was expecting bishop e3. And then again, I have the same array of options. g5, queen takes b2, rook f8 maybe. Doubling is a lot easier now. But white kind of inexplicably just relinquished the d-pawn. Maybe just didn't realize that that pawn was hit three times. And white only has two defenders. So this is where things start to really go downhill for white. Yeah, I think I was better before this, but now I think we're getting into territory where white might not be able to save the game. <clears throat> yep, queen d2. Spent some time here. I think this is one of my longer thinks of the game. This was a two-minute think. Deciding upon whether I should take this pawn or play some constructive move. See the engine suggesting rook c8, rook d8, e5. Okay. What about queen takes b2? So this is what I was looking at with this line. Rook b1, try to go after b7. Thought a lot about this ending. Yeah, knight c6. I don't know, I just felt like it was giving white some chances for survival. Maybe I would have a hard time taming this rook somehow. And it's probably still close to winning, if not outright winning for black, up the clear pawn. But I felt like I was selling out a little early in taking b2, so that's why I played knight c6. Yeah, and then white let me take this one too, so it does seem like attacking e6 is a better idea. Rook ae1. Can't remember if I mentioned this move. I think I mentioned it in a similar case with the white queen coming here, but that does hit the one point on the board where I'm pretty vulnerable, which is this e6 pawn, this backward pawn on the e-file. And remember, I can't play rook e8 in response to this because it allows bishop takes d5 using the pin. So I probably would have had to play like rook e7 or maybe knight e5 to have the queen defend. But this, this does temporarily look a little awkward to me. Probably still fine, though. Okay, so knight c6. Rook d1. I went ahead and took. Interesting that the engine still gives a, a dubious mark for that move, but we're going to ignore that. <laughs> I, think, I think these dubious marks and some of the annotations are just pretty harsh. I've said that before, but I think they're looking to assign something where probably doesn't warrant it. Still a... Still a top three move, and it wins another pawn. Yeah, so had white played queen e1, maybe they can still try for some tricks. This has the same idea as with rook e1, which is if I play rook e8, white can play bishop takes d5. But I would have seen that. I mentioned that in the game. So yeah, again, knight e5, or maybe even rook e7 or something is okay. As rook e7, bishop takes d5 doesn't work because the knight defends. This was also a theme in the game. So we get a trade, and I, I'm happy to see a queen trade here. I know the engine shows the queen trade being best, but to me, I'm going into an endgame up two pawns. Unless white has something real quick here, I'm going to win this pretty much every time because the bishop pair can't possibly make up for the two-pawn deficit. So white's really got to whip up some counterplay fast to counteract that. And rook, D, rook b1 doesn't work anymore, which is the move white played. But with my rook on f7, this was a, a nice benefit to white playing bishop h6 for me that I got my rook there. And also why I played knight c6 earlier. This just doesn't work for white. So if white played rook e1, yeah, again, that makes it a little more awkward Taking aim against this pawn. Once more, knight e5, bishop e5. Probably would have played this move. I mean, there is f4. Maybe some scenario like this gives white some chances because if they knock out that e6 pawn, the bishop really does come to life, not only against d5, but if I save the pawn, down this diagonal in general. So they might be able to take the knight and, you know, maybe save an endgame like this. Still down one pawn, but it's a rook ending. 
So White's sense of urgency just wasn't there, and they didn't properly protect their center either. So bishop g7, take. Yeah, now comes rook e1. But white doesn't have the bishop pair anymore. I feel like this should be a much easier conversion. Rook e7. Again, can't get lazy here. Rook e8, it still allows bishop takes d5. You have to be hyper vigilant of loose pieces and tactical themes. That would be an easy blunder to make. So rook e7, keep that defended. Maybe king f6 also looks pretty good, now that I think about it. Because in theory, I'd rather have my king protect this pawn and free up this rook than have the rook be tied down. Knight d4, maybe too. Ah, uh, knight d4, okay. Yeah, I think knight d4 I didn't quite like because I thought rook e1 could be a reply. But I see now I wouldn't have to move that knight. I could play rook f4, defend the knight, and also blockade. Blockade that f pawn, and this looks really nice for me. I'm going to start coordinating and winning. So rook e7. And I'm just trying to calm the position down at this point. I think I kind of misplayed it, honestly. Yeah, like, I'm not sure rook f8 was the best move. I was trying to stop f4, but I could see this being more constructive. Give myself this option. Maybe it's nothing all that impressive, though, because... Now I do play king f7. Unfortunately, I can't play rook f6 because of g5. Oh, there's also... I don't know if I saw this in the game, but they're, they're also threatening bishop takes d5 again after playing rook e3 because they've got the rooks double aligned here. So, okay. Yeah, king, king f7. This just seems like a good cohesive move to play. Defending this. Backing up the, the rook as well. Take your time in these endings. On the board, that is. Not necessarily on the clock, if you're low on, on time, but I want to play a lot of improving moves. I'm not rushing anything. I'm not trying to advance one of these pawns prematurely and drop something. I'm keeping them stable and protected on their squares, trying not to allow counterplay. And White could have checked here, but I'd be very happy to trade rooks. I think something like this could easily happen too, which is also fine by me. And I can just slowly make sure everything's defended, maybe activate my pieces later, maybe start pushing the queen side majority. I'm going to take as little risk as possible here in playing for a win. Most importantly, stop the opponent's threats. Yeah, and then here, white played this inexplicable f3 move. I really thought f4 was coming. I thought that was almost white's only chance to try to break things up a little bit. I wonder what I would have done against that. I feel like, hmm. Yeah, I feel like rook d8 is probably a pretty reasonable expectation for me to find here. The idea there is to back up the d pawn. So f5 will no longer work. Let's say here I can take. And I've got this sufficiently protected. Looks like I could even play e5 if I want to keep these pawns connected. That looks pretty good too. A king with a knight and some pawns involved, I really try to like keep a tight, coordinated position because bishops are long-range pieces. If you maintain cohesiveness against a bishop with your king, knight, pawn structure, you often have very good chances against a bishop. Also here, since the rooks are on board and white's rooks are attacking, that's all the more reason to keep things coordinated. Yeah, f3, I, I just really don't know. Maybe it was a mouse slip. But g5, just trying to stop these pawns from coming up. I'm going to go through this part kind of fast. Yeah, because rook takes e6 was played. <laughs> Maybe white let a sibling take over or something. I don't know. But that's just a straight up rook blunder. Could have been a little complicated here still. I am threatening the pawn and especially knight c2. Rook h1 is the best move here. That's kind of funny. But there's still some stuff to play for. I don't know. Like, let's say rook b3. Kind of daring me to take this pawn because then my knight does get a little bit oddly placed. Maybe white can look for some counterplay. Still probably winning for, uh, for black. I could even play something like a5. Just take it slow. 
But yep, Rook takes e6, and this was this was all over after this. We don't need to look at the rest. Oh, I'll show the stalemate trick though, because just amazing how often stalemates can crop up. So what did I play here? Uh, I played knight c2. It's made in nine. White went rook f3. I played d4. That is the best move. So I'm trying to go knight e3. And if the king moves over, then I can play one of my rooks down and it'll be made on the next move. But white played g6, which is actually a great try because imagine, imagine I took with the pawn. Uh, what was I thinking white could do? Oh, no, 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 sorry. Imagine I jump the gun and play knight e3. Yeah, I guess this isn't going to remotely work for white, but let's say take, take, take here. Suddenly we're in a weird situation where my rooks actually can't stop this pawn for the moment. Like I can't play rook g8 because this is defended. My king can't stop the pawn as well. I I'm winning in many ways here. It looks like this being maybe one of the no-brainer ways to do it. But I just wanted to avoid any scenario like that. I thought there was some stalemate I was thinking of, but maybe I was seeing ghosts. Oh, yeah, it could have been this. Could have been this situation I was thinking of. Yeah. I guess even here, though, had this happened, rook f5, I could play something like king h6. But white does have this, this mad rook scenario where I, I still can't take the rook either way because that's stalemate. With the, with the knight controlling e1 and white blocked off by the rooks. So I'd have to do some dancing to get out of this. But now when white plays rook h7, I can take the rook finally because they have h5. So, <laughs> yeah, none of this really worked, but, you know, you, you got to be vigilant in these scenarios always. So I took with the king just so white would have to ex exhaust their h-pawn moves and then play the knight check. And this is no longer stalemate. Or if king e1, we just mate like this. All right. So, kind of baffling how white handled that in the middle game or late opening. But I think a pretty good instructive game. Nonetheless, this is an option for black. Those of you who play the uh, hyper accelerated dragon or the accelerated dragon against the open Sicilian, you might like this line because you play g6. And I would say it's uh, kind of a second tier option behind d5 and knight f6 against the Alapin, which I would classify as the best moves. But it's by no means bad. It's recommended in some repertoire books, and it makes a lot of sense. You're, um, you're preparing the fianchetto and long-term pressure against the center. But you're coupling it with this d5 move and forcing white to do something about the pawns, either stagger with e5 or capture. If white defends, you can take, and white has an isolated pawn that you can fire against. And even in the staggering case, where white advances e5, this bishop can be relevant later, as we saw with f6 in the game, and uh, the pressure against this, this mini structure that we're trying to chop down at the base. All right, thanks to my opponent for the game. This was a climbing the rating ladder game, educational series. Yeah, I think my opponent just needed to respond to my threats better. Really watch moves like h3. This is kind of advanced, but a lot of people play moves like h3, just kind of knee-jerk response. But that can be a leak in your game. You know, if you sense an exchange is going to happen anyways, or especially that an exchange might be desirable for your opponent, try not to invest further moves getting them to play that. Right? So that's an easy mistake to make, but... I think that actually did start this trend in my favor. And always count attackers and defenders. I mean, you can even see at this rating level that that is valid. In this position, white just didn't react to the fact that I have three attackers on d4, and white only has two defenders, the queen and the knight. All right, thanks for, for watching, everyone. Hope you're doing well, and I'll be back again soon with another video. Bye, guys.